in the name of God, who is grace and love and communion. For us, the hardest days, the best days, will have names associated with them. Names of the people we love. Names of the people we care for and the people who care for us. I began getting cards here on the close from a couple whom I've married years ago now. Not forwarded cards from the parish, but here they figured out the address. They got married maybe four years ago, beautiful August Saturday outside in the park. Spectacularly beautiful day, until right before the ceremony started, when it began to rain. We got into the front, and the skies opened up, and it rained throughout the entire ceremony. Now, somehow, it happens in New York and maybe everywhere, umbrellas bloomed in the congregation, leaving only the couple, the bridal party, and me completely uncovered. <laughs> and we got to the homily. I could see the deep prayer in their eyes. <laughs> Please, preach short. <laughs> I can see the same prayer in your eyes today. <laughs> and you know, sometimes you keep in touch with people and sometimes you don't. And for a couple years, we didn't. Until the couple came back to the parish for the memorial of the bride's younger brother, who had died at age 15 by suicide right after Easter. This young boy had died with his confirmation prayer book in his back pocket. His name was Jack. And now I get cards from the couple every holiday. They just had a baby. And they wanted to share with me. The most important things we do or to care for each other. Certainly, the care we give to our communities, but the care our communities give back to us. No one here knows that better than me, because I grew up with you. My whole life has been spent in the care of the Diocese of New York. The birth of my children, the death of our dog, all the moments in life, the times when I needed a call, you know, those moments when no one else knows but the pastor knows, you're the ones who called. You're the ones who taught me the most important thing we do is to care for each other and to receive the care of those around us. Sir, the gospel says, we want to see Jesus. Now, this passage comes at the end of the major section of the gospel of John, chapter 12. And the folks from out of town, scripture tells us, not the religious people have come to see have come to the festival. And you know, the festivals in Jerusalem were dangerous. They weren't altogether a good thing. So the people from half town have come to see. They've come to see Jesus. They've come to see the Jesus who in the Gospel of John has signs of God's love. Signs of abundance, water into wine. Signs of healing eyes opened, signs of death into life. They've come to see the Jesus who loves us, who heals the sick and raises the dead, 
It's actually not so gendered in Greek, I don't think. Lord, we yearn to experience Jesus. To be seen and heard and known and loved. To belong to a community bigger than ourselves. To belong to a God who loves us and cares for us. Now, this is our gospel. This is the practice in our community lives. I also think it's written into the fabric of the universe. It's a big claim. But Miroslav Volf said it. He's a theologian. Volf said, we're oriented towards God in the very fabric of our lives. Now, Christians have said this for a very long time, and sometimes it sounds like we're part of the club. We've chosen teams, and we're on the right team. That's not what Wolf meant. Wolf was writing about the structure of world religions. What all religions share is transcendence, bigger than ourselves. And this transcendence, he suggests, is written into the fabric of our lives because it's written into the fabric of creation. We are made to point towards God. And the gospel tells us that God is exactly the one who loves and cares and sees and hears all of us. In which, in whom, we know we belong. Love full of grace and truth, the logos of the universe into which we're all pointed. This draws us together as our communities. You can feel it this week, can't you? The traditions we carry forward together, the side moments in sacristies, when something's gone just a little bit wrong. I know that didn't happen to you, but sometimes I've heard hypothetically in Holy Week, not everything goes according to plan. And sometimes, again, hypothetically, in Holy Week, people are a little bit anxious. And so things that may be small seem big. Most important thing we do is care for each other. You can feel it in community. I want to hear all of your stories about the adventures of Christian community together. I want to hear all of our stories about how we see Jesus in each other and the people who have given their lives back to our churches, the people who serve with you and I, the great privilege of people we get to serve with every single day. This fabric of the universe, the pointing of our lives draws us together. It is Anglican that we have mutual responsibility and interdependence. We are made for each other. Our connections to each other are not a humility and independence, but rather, but rather how God has made the world. It's how God has made us. And so for the adventures of our ministries, for the renewal of the church, it begins with pastoral care. It begins with our care for each other. The Holy Spirit moves at ground level because it first moves through us, joins us together in our love for each other, how we're seen and heard and known and loved, how all of us belong. And this points us out into the world. The world yearns to know this. The world yearns to know the message that we share. This message of the fabric in our redemption, the fabric in our creation, being completely bound up in God. The world yearns to hear that. And it needs to hear it this year. I don't know yet how you and I together will preach about the election. 
I don't know yet how we'll get through the civic life in all of our communities this year. We're going to figure that out together. But here's what I know. It's not only civic life. People hear messages about Jesus which are about choosing up teams, which are about exclusion, which are about God being for some and not for all. And we know that we preach a different gospel, that we seek a different way. However we handle civic life, you and I know the gospel we preach. And we know that white Christian nationalism is a sin, it is a heresy, and we will preach a different gospel from our pulpits and from our front steps and our care. We will live a different way so the world can see a different gospel because that's what the world is yearning for. The whole world is pointed towards God and the fabric of creation. And we see it, experience it in Jesus and each other. So today, as we renew our vows together, whether for the very first time or we've been here together in this place many times before. I invite you to remember the names, the people whom you've cared for, who have been the fullest expression of this love that is ours. And remember in gratitude the people who have cared for you, who have cared for us. God's story for us now is the renewal of our church for the healing of the world. And it starts with care. We are seen and heard and known and loved. That's what we do for each other because that's what God does for us. That's the message that we can share with the whole world. Lord, we yearn to experience Jesus. I hear it. So do you. The most important thing we do is to care for each other. And that is where renewal and healing begin. In Christ's name. Amen. Amen.